With almost 2 million subscribers on YouTube and 88,000 followers on Instagram, Carlos Henrique Medeiros gained widespread recognition as a successful Brazilian YouTuber with a flourishing career. But after he disappeared on Christmas Day of 2023, his family and the town of Itapacarica de Sara began to panic. And sadly, their search efforts would end in one of the wildest stories of 2024 to date. But this story goes far beyond the surface delving into a complex web of drugs, lust, desperation, and deceit. So, what happened to Carlos Medeiros? And what do we know so far? Welcome or welcome back to Coffeehouse Crime, folks. My name is Adrian, and today we're looking at the mysterious death of Carlos Medeiros. Now, this story is both wild and very, very recent, with investigations still currently ongoing there seems to be a lot of confusion as to what actually happened. And so in this video, we'll look at everything that we know so far. Now, I do want to point out that with this case happening so recently, all of the information that we know is subject to change, though it will be interesting to see how all the opinions and facts develop over time. Before we begin, this is your gentle reminder that I serve coffee and darkly fascinating stories. So if you like to caffeinate while you investigate, please consider subscribing. And now with that said, please grab yourself a coffee, pull up a seat and get ready for the deep dive. This is the case of Carlos Medeiros. Bom dia, folks, and welcome to Sao Paulo. With a population of 12 million residents and a wider population of 44 million, Sao Paulo is Brazil's most inhabited city. It's found towards Brazil's southeastern shoreline and is only a stone's throw away from Rio de Janeiro. Interesting fact, but did you know that more than 1 million pizzas are eaten here every single day? Anyway, our case today pulls us to the municipality of Itapacarica de Sara, an area which can be found on Sao Paulo's southwestern outskirts. Now, this town is a little less busy when compared to the city's many inner suburbs. But for Carlos, and the Medeiros family, that was perfect. Born in the year 1997, Carlos Henrique Medeiros was raised in Itapacarica de Sara. Even from childhood, he was known to be a natural prankster and enjoyed pushing his family's many buttons, especially towards his sisters Katia and Christiane. Despite this, it can only be assumed that Carlos loved his family and had a great relationship with them. Through childhood and his teen years, he was often seen with his sisters, despite getting on their nerves every night now and again. Now, Carlos was definitely a family man, but the one that he was especially close to was his father, Antonio. The two of them did almost everything together, including days out, going to football games, and even making pranks. Speaking of which, it is probably time to address the elephant in the room here, but Carlos would eventually become a rather massive YouTuber. Beginning his channel in June of 2015, Carlos found fame after uploading many videos focused on pranking his sisters. It's worth mentioning here that although his online name was Henrique Medeiros, his actual first name was Carlos. Now, as previously mentioned, Carlos had always been passionate about pranks and filming. He was the type of guy to bring a camera just about anywhere filming both stunts and pranks with his family and friends from a very early age. Furthermore, he had this innate talent for shooting his videos very well, and coming up with creative ideas that were made to go viral. With the backlog of material, Carlos decided to open his own channel on YouTube, which included posting videos of various pranks that he regularly got up to. Fortunately for him, his YouTube channel quickly began to garner traction during an infamous time in YouTube's history. Those who have been on the platform long enough may remember the time when prank content and social experiment videos were king over any other type of content. YouTubers such as Sam Pepper, Vitaly's TV, and FusiTube were supreme in this area of the internet. And knowing that this was the formula needed to become successful, Carlos paid close attention to those kinds of videos garnering the most views and sought to emulate them himself. In Brazil, a quickly growing untapped market was just waiting for someone like Carlos to come in and take advantage. Because while many English-speaking prank channels were raking in millions of views, there was little to no one doing it on the same scale that was Brazilian or spoke Portuguese. Recognized
Recognizing the opportunity, Carlos jumped at the chance to be the first one to fill the gap. And it didn't take long for his videos to reach an audience either. And almost overnight, he was amongst the top Brazilian Portuguese-speaking YouTube pranksters. His videos covered the whole prank YouTuber spectrum. This included running away from the police, giveaways, stealing from neighbors, pranking his dad, and even sexualizing his female friends and family. It's clear from his thumbnails that Carlos was marketing his videos towards teenage boys. They were a considerable portion of YouTube's consumer base, especially in South America. And regardless of what you think about the content, it was being eaten up by Carlos's fan base. As Carlos began to experiment with YouTube, many of his newer videos featured both family members and friends, and he leaned on the man that he cared about the most, Antonio. Carlos's father was seen in many of his newer videos, with both of them often joking and laughing around together. And through these videos, it is very clear to see that they had an excellent relationship. Now, Carlos was very proud of his father too. He regularly posted pictures of them on Instagram. And while Carlos sometimes sought to get on his father's nerves for a reaction, his father was always begrudgingly patient with him. And even as Carlos began his venture into YouTube, he had his father's full support behind him. With success found in his formula, it seemed that nothing could stop Carlos's meteoric rise on YouTube. Over the next few years, his channel would grow to amass a whopping 1.8 million subscribers, with over 23 million views across his videos. Now known for more than just pranks, Carlos posted other lifestyle videos videos too, including vlogs and days in his life. Most of these videos were intended to look outrageous from the outset, which is probably why his most popular video, named I Test How Naughty My Cousin Is and It Went Horribly Wrong, received almost 10 million views on the platform. In the background, Carlos's audience was also growing on both Instagram and Facebook, gaining upwards of 85,000 followers throughout the years. His Instagram profile would offer a more personal lens to his life, Again, further highlighting just how much he loved his father. The father and son would also start creating skits on Instagram, with Carlos focusing on the upbeat dynamic between him and Antonio, and Antonio creating humorous memes about his family. Now, this channel often focuses on murderous people with terrible parents, so with that in mind, can we just take a moment to appreciate how refreshing it is to see Carlos and Antonio as best friends? The two seemed absolutely inseparable, but sadly, what they didn't know is that 2023 would begin with incomprehensible heartache, and this would be sure to end Carlos's career. Behind the scenes, Antonio was dealing with an increasingly worrying illness. Things were not looking good for him, and sadly, shortly into the new year, he passed away. Friends would testify that this absolutely devastated Carlos, where he was once a bright and rather ambitious young man, he was now a sad, lonely, and depressed shell of his former self. It was at that very moment that Carlos abandoned his YouTube career entirely. With his father now gone, all of that drive and determination seemed to collapse. And needing some sort of relief to help him from this never-ending nightmare, he turned to the world of drugs to help him cope. While Carlos would still occasionally see his old friends, he also began to spend time with another group of people. This new group, which was a mix of newcomers and old friends alike, all had one thing in common, and sadly, that was cocaine. Throughout the year of 2023, Carlos slipped further into this newly dark world. It is evident through his Instagram photos that he missed his father dearly, and he was not managing to get through it. In February of 2023, he posted an image of the two with the caption, Rest in peace, Dad. Hope to see you again soon. You taught me everything, except living without you. He followed up with another post by saying, it's Friday. Without you, the world has lost its grace. I swear, I thought nothing in this world could shake me. But losing you was like losing myself. I don't exist anymore, and it's only a matter of time. In July of 2024, which was half a year after his father passed away, he posted another video of Antonio. This one captioned with, Missing the best dad in the world. My best friend. My recording partner my singing duo. One day, we will be together. I just hope it won't be long. As you can tell, Carlos was finding it very difficult to come to terms with the death of his father, 
and as the family approached the first year anniversary, he was still just as distraught. But before the family could even finish 2023, they were met with more grief and mystery. Because on Christmas Day, Carlos Medeiros disappeared. His sister, Christiane, hadn't heard from him in a while, which was highly unusual between the two. She began to grow worried that something might have happened to her brother. While she too was mourning the loss of her father, she knew that her brother had taken it especially hard. She also knew that he was quite destructive in the way that he coped. Now, according to Christiane, the last time that she saw her brother was in the early hours of Christmas morning, when he was seen watching fireworks with family and friends in the local town square. Apparently, Carlos told her that instead of spending Christmas with family, he wanted to spend it with his new friends. And although this was quite disappointing to hear, she wasn't surprised. But after her brother failed to show up the following day, she knew that wherever he was, he likely needed her help. His disappearance over Christmas dinner was wildly out of character. Following her concerns, Christiane managed to rally her family. With the situation at hand, they began to search around the town for him, checking in at the local hospitals and scouring the surrounding fields. But after a long and exhaustive day of searching, he was still nowhere to be found. The anxiety really began to sink in overnight when his silence remained for an abnormally longer time than usual. It was at this moment that his sister took to Instagram, announcing his disappearance in a desperate bid to find him. Now, before disappearing, Carlos told his sister that he had planned to stay with friends who lived just minutes away from their property. And so, with this information at hand, this reasonably was the next place to look for him. Those friends were a married couple, a 28-year-old man named Renan Jose and his 24-year-old wife, Caroline Milo. After asking them if they had seen him, Renan and Caroline told Carlos's family that he had left shortly after dinner that night and that they hadn't heard from him since. And although they had no idea of his whereabouts, they did seem eager enough to lend any help that they could. Now sadly, without any other substantial information, Carlos's disappearance thawed over the following days. No one seemed to have any idea what happened to him, and over the next week, his family and friends scoured the area to no avail whatsoever. The couple that last saw Carlos joined his family in their search, also taking to social media themselves to ask for any information which may help find him. But as the week dragged on, the search party would grow further and further desperate. It seemed as if Carlos had vanished without a trace, and although everyone knew that something was wrong, they just didn't know what precisely happened. Many of Carlos's his childhood friends knew that, despite his struggles, he would never disappear under his free will. And to make things further suspicious, some of his friends did not trust the couple he was last seen with. One of those friends in particular, who was named Robson Casimiro, was very suspicious of Renan and Caroline. He believed that the couple were simply lying to the authorities and that perhaps they knew more than they were willing to share. And so, on the night of New Year's Eve, Robson decided to take matters into his own hands, and under the cover of darkness, he investigated the couple's property for himself. The plan was that he would begin with their garden, before then peering through the windows and going from there. But while surveying the outside garden, Robson noticed an unusual pile of recently shoveled earth. He made his way over to investigate, and that is when, upon closer inspection, he noticed something that almost made him collapse. To his shock and despair, he could already see Carlos's t-shirt sticking out from the dirt. He called the authorities immediately, and after arriving at the property, officers discovered something far worse than just a garment. After all of this time, and despite the couple spending their entire week searching for him with his very own family, Carlos Medeiros' body was in their garden all along. And now that his body was finally found, all eyes were on Renan and Caroline. Suffice to say, things were not looking good for the couple. It immediately became apparent that they had lied to the authorities and Carlos's family for the best part of a week, and now they had to come up with a better story. So, with this case happening so recently, this is what we know so far. According to Renan and Caroline, Carlos had come over to the property for more than just Christmas dinner. Apparently, cocaine was also on the menu. They further claim that shortly into their binge, Carlos started seducing Caroline's younger sister, who was only 16 years old at the time 
and shortly after that, the two went to the bathroom to have sex. While the two are having intimate relations, and apparently when Carlos was just about to climax, he started to feel unwell. And at that very moment, he then suddenly collapsed and died. Renan and Carolyn claimed that they then checked his pulse, but it was clear that his heart had stopped beating. And although they tried to revive him for three hours, it sadly was to no avail. Now, obviously, their confession held some very serious allegations against Carlos, but it's very important to highlight here that they are not yet confirmed. This is a story that has been created by two people who have proven that they are capable of deceit. And so, with that in mind, this may just be chapter two of their web of lies. Now, while the exact cause of Carlos's death is not yet recognized, it is possible that heavy drug usage in combination with strenuous exercise did create fatal heart complications. According to their own story, they were so shocked and disturbed by her sudden death that they had absolutely no idea what to do next. Rather than call for help or contact the police, it only seemed natural to them that the alternative was to bury him in a shallow grave in their garden. And this is the main reason that people doubt their story. Because if they were totally innocent, then why would they escalate the situation by concealing his body? Following his death, Renan and Caroline asked her 16-year-old sister to help move the body. They dug a grave overnight, placed him in the grave the following morning, filled it back up, and then played dumb throughout the following days. They made it appear as if they had no idea what happened to Carlos, even looking at his family right in the eyes as they lied about their knowledge. And to take one more deceitful step, they even took to social media to ask for any information regarding his whereabouts. Because surely you cannot be a killer if you're both a good neighbor and a good Samaritan. Right? In the current stage of the investigation, officers are still trying to determine if the couple's story is plausible and can be trusted, or if other foul play was involved. Sao Paulo Police Chief Luis Faria announced that, upon initial inspection, there were no signs of shooting, stabbing, or strangulation. An official autopsy of the corpse is currently underway, and depending on what is found, the charges currently placed against the couple could change quite drastically. If the report indicates that his death was accidental, then the couple will be charged with concealing a corpse. On the flip side, if it is proven that he was murdered, then Renan and Caroline will be charged with homicide. While the police continue their investigation, Carlos's family is understandably outraged. Renan and Caroline were people from their community, people they trusted, and were supposed to be helping them with their search. Carlos's sister, Christiane, believes that there is much more to Caroline and Renan's current story, and she further believes that her brother's death was more than just an unfortunate accident. In a statement to the press, she said, If my brother got sick as they claimed, then why didn't they call an ambulance to help him? Regardless of what people thought individually, it became quite clear that some in the local area demanded immediate retribution. And after the authorities confirmed that the couple were in custody, residents in the local area equipped themselves with torches and firebombs. You can probably see where this is going, but they attacked their property in an attempt to burn the house down. While the house was not completely burned to the ground, Clear evidence of smoke and fire damage is visible all over the exterior walls, with some reporters even recording the scene as it happened. Now, regardless of their emotions, this was an extremely unwise thing to do. Possible evidence to confirm or deny their involvement in his death may have now burned down in the process, making this story even more challenging to unravel. Interesting enough, no suspects have currently been arrested for arson. So, what precisely happens next? Well, to begin with, we must first wait for Carlos's toxicology report to return. The results will determine if drugs were in his system at the time of his death or not. If the results come back strongly positive, then Renan and Carolyn will likely face charges of concealing a corpse and nothing more. I mean, they may have merely been scared that, if they called the police, then officers would have found cocaine in their possession or even assumed that it was murder from the outset. In addition to this, the police chief also expressed his belief that Renan knew that if he was found to be in possession of cocaine, then he would have lost custody of his three children and his pregnant wife. On the other hand, it is also possible that one of these two lovers experienced a psychotic break while high, and then assaulted Carlos, resulting in his murder. We also can't exclude the possibility that they murdered him for his money. 
because Carlos had quite a fruitful career on YouTube. And for that, the authorities must remain mindful. And that fire that burned their house to the ground and potentially destroyed all evidence? Well, maybe it was not an angry neighbour who set it. Perhaps it was somebody who was also culpable of the murder. Just a thought. Honestly, it is not clear how this story will turn out. However, saying that, I do think it's worth talking about right now, because it'll be interesting to see how these facts and opinions change over time. Regardless of what actually happened that night, the local community's response was both swift and brutal, and everyone seems to blame Renan and Caroline to some degree for what happened to Carlos. Moving forward, there are only two possible theories, really. Either foul play was involved, and the couple murdered him in cold blood, or they mishandled his unfortunate death by not alerting the authorities, doubling down when they lied to the Midaras family's faces and then helped in their search party. When locals hear of his death, they think of a bright, smart, and enthusiastic young man who was faced with terribly unfortunate circumstances in the year leading up to his demise. His father's death put him on a sad and desperate path, one filled with cocaine and drug abuse. And sadly, this path was one that he could not free himself from. Carlos Henrique Medeiros's YouTube channel continues to stand on YouTube as a digital collection of his memories, and his Instagram profile also remains up to this day, showcasing his unwavering love for his father and his darkest moments after Antonio's death. Tragically, with Carlos never recovering after his father's passing, Antonio's death was kind of his death too. Some of his captions left behind eerily display his prediction that he would not be far off behind his father. In his final post on Instagram, he finished his comment by saying, One day we will be together. I just hope it won't be long. Tragically, his hopes were granted. Now, these stories are always tragic, but what really got me in this one is the pain that Carlos felt in the death of his father. It is a real tragedy to know that his final year on Earth was filled with so much despair. As always, folks, I'll keep you updated with anything that happens to this case, either in a new upload video in the coming months or through Instagram. What I would love from you right now is to let me know what you think happened in this case, because right now it could theoretically be murder or just simply an accident. What I think will be very interesting to see, though, is how our opinions change after the story develops. And while you're there, let me know what you think about this type of content, because usually I cover cases that are pretty much done and dusted, but with this happening so recently, I'd like to know if you found this interesting. Anyway, folks, that's the end of the video today. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you being here. And if you're new to Coffeehouse Crime, then welcome. Please consider subscribing. It does help me out. Very briefly, if you want to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon. Alternatively, if you want to keep up to date with what I'm doing, please check out my social media. Anyway folks, that is it for me today. Thank you again for watching, and as always, I'll see you again very soon for another video. Until that moment arrives though, remember to look after yourself, look after each other, and of course, stay safe. Thank you, and goodbye.